Within the enormous company that is Mercedes-Benz, there's a brand called Maybach. And when I say that name, it probably recalls big, opulent sedans of the early 2000s, and more recently, the Mercedes Maybach S-Class. By the way, there's a brand new version of that car that we shot a video with, and that's linked in the description below. But customers, and even wealthy customers that would look at a Maybach, want SUVs. So Mercedes Maybach said, sure, why not? So this is the Mercedes Maybach GLS 600, which is of course based on Mercedes' biggest three-row SUV, the GLS. As you can tell, Maybach went out of its way to make this thing as extravagant as possible, and that includes an absolutely kick-ass back seat. We'll talk about that in a second. The exterior alone is a huge statement maker, and of course, there are Maybach-specific touches all over the place. Chrome, baby, and lots of chrome. Let's talk about paint for a second. There are six monotone colors and eight two-tone options, including the one that's on this car, and this nice little pinstripe that runs alongside of the GLS. Then, when you open the door, you get these running boards, which come standard on the Maybach GLS, and then, when you shut them, they retract nicely into the bodywork like they're not even there. Probably my favorite design detail on the entire car are these absolutely stunning 23-inch wheels. You can get 23-inchers on a standard GLS, but none of them have a design that looks that sharp. And as we move around to the front of the car, we get a lot more chrome detailing uh, in the lower portion of the front fascia and this beautiful vertical slotted Maybach grille. If you notice closely, the vertical slots in this grille match the design of the wheels and the design in the running boards. This is the first Mercedes SUV to wear the three-pointed star on the hood. And the back of the car is actually where the Maybach looks most like its normal GLS sibling. We have GLS 600 badging right here, one more Maybach badge to really make it stand out, then of course the Maybach crest, which is available on either C-pillar. So welcome to the back seat of the Maybach GLS, where the first thing we have to talk about is just the amount of space you get as a rear seat passenger. Remember, this is normally a three-row SUV, and Maybach knocked out the third row completely, so they're able to move back the second row and add in all of this legroom. If you're on this side of the car, the passenger side, you can also hit this button, which moves the seat in front of you even more forward. And when you do that, you can extend the legrest portion of this seat to where it's almost completely flat and stretched out. Of course, there's a lot more room to recline back as well. This car is available in a five-seat configuration. The one we have here is a four-seat. Uh, when you opt to that five-seat configuration, you lose some of the cool stuff in the center console. Specifically, when you move this up, these tray tables. So these fold out completely like this. You can do some work. Earlier we had a laptop out and there's a Wi-Fi hotspot with the car. This place is completely set up uh, to do some work in the back seat. You also lose the option to get this, which is a champagne fridge in the back of the Maybach that comes with these flutes that are made of a solid block of silver. And then we get into the tech portion of the back seat, which starts with this little display tablet that pops right out of the center console. Here you can command pretty much anything in the car that you could with the MBUX system up front as well. So that includes uh, all of the ambient lighting. You can send destinations to the driver up there in the navigation system. You can play music through your phone, through one of the USB ports. You can pretty much do all of it. My favorite is that ambient lighting though. When we talk about this car, they have shoved it absolutely everywhere. There's this beautiful strip of color that sits right next to you as a passenger. It's in the seats in front of you. They even snuck it in somehow into the lining where the sunroof is. It's absolutely gorgeous. And all you have to do is take this color wheel and you can light up the car pretty much any way you want. In terms of seat comfort as a rear seat passenger, like I said, there's already a ton of leg space, but you also get ventilated seats, heated seats, and a full-on massage program uh, with tons and tons of options there. Aside from all the tech tricks though, you have to look at the small details on the interior in this car. And that includes these throw pillows, which you get that match the leather interior of the vehicle. There are these cushy headrests where you can totally relax. And then this beautiful sort of a stitching that runs alongside of the leather. leather. It's absolutely gorgeous in this interior. Mercedes tells me that the majority of customers for this car will be doing the driving themselves. There's only a small chunk of that population that's gonna be getting the chauffeur treatment all the time. I guess that means I should tell you how the GLS Maybach handles itself on the road. 
And the first thing I have to say is just how similar this car is to drive compared to a GLS 580. But that shouldn't be shocking. This car uses the exact same wheelbase as the GLS 580. They didn't stretch it anymore to make the Maybach. Uh, and in terms of weight, well, they yanked the third row out of this car, which was already heavy, save a little bit of weight there. But then they added in a super heavy second row of VIP chairs. So it's sort of a wash. Mercedes says, all things considered, the Maybach probably weighs a few hundred pounds more than the GLS 580. But when a car is already over 5,000 pounds and this big to begin with, you really don't feel that extra weight. This also has the same air suspension that's found in other GLS models, and that includes e-active body control, which is the Mercedes technology, which sort of helps keep this thing planted and help fight against body roll in the corners. This uses a four liter turbocharged V8, which is borrowed from AMG, and it makes 550 horsepower and 538 pound-feet of torque. If you really need it to, this car will get to 60 in 4.8 seconds, and if you really, really need it to, it will top out at 130 miles per hour. And remember that this engine also has EQ boost, which is that little extra assistance from the electric supercharger. But what that means is so much of the power and the torque is down way, way low in the rev range. So you barely have to put your foot in it to get this thing up to speed. And that means that the nine speed transmission can pretty much just hang out and do its thing. It doesn't have to work that hard at all. You can tell that they went back with the Maybach and gave it an extra once over because it's ridiculous how calm and smooth this thing rose through the gears. Now let's talk drive modes for a second because there are two that are worth pointing out. That starts with the new Maybach driving mode, which is obviously specific to this car. They say that that optimizes comfort for those in the back seat, but just leveling between you and me, going back and forth between comfort mode and Maybach mode, there's hardly a difference. This thing is already so comfortable with how it handles itself going over bumps. The other drive mode worth talking about is the off-road setting. Yes, you heard me right. I was talking with the engineers and they were saying that the ground clearance is the same between the Maybach and the other GLS models. And technically speaking, all the coverage underneath the car that protects it is the same as well. So the only thing stopping you from going off road are those massive 23 inch wheels. In terms of handling, I don't know what you expect from your Maybach SUV, but that e-active body control system does do quite a bit to keep this thing as planted as possible in the corners. And the steering actually has decent weighting to it. It's not completely dead and it's not as light as you might expect. When I think Maybach, for me, that's always going to be a big imposing sedan on the road. And the GLS didn't change my mind on that. But in a world where the Bentley Bentayga, the Rolls-Royce Cullinan, Aston Martin DBX, and all of those others are starting to pop out of the woodwork, you can see why there was a very clear business case to build this car. And having spent the last few days driving it, I don't think they're gonna have a problem selling every one that they make. So can you turn an SUV into a Maybach? Yeah, you can. And I'm really glad that they did.